Admiral, thank you both for being here. Uh, thank you both for your long and distinguished service to our nation. Uh, Admiral, I'd like to talk some about uh, the NSA's policies, and, and I have long expressed concerns about the NSA's policies on, on, on really two fronts. One, an overbroad intrusion into the privacy rights of law-abiding citizens. Okay, that's a good start there. And two, a pattern of not focusing sufficiently on bad actors and not collecting the information, the intelligence needed to prevent terrorist acts. It seems to me the focus overall of our intelligence and defense community and law enforcement community is directed far too much at law-abiding citizens and far too little at individualized bad actors. So I'd like to ask you questions on, on both fronts. Starting out with the citizenry at large, uh, as you're aware, President Obama's review group on intelligence and communication technology has said that the bulk metadata collected by the NSA should be held by a third party. And the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board has recommended ending bulk metadata collection altogether. Uh, do you agree with, with either of these proposals? Um, in terms of pulling the data from the National Security Agency, yes, I believe that there is a standard that we can work toward that would enable us to do that while still meeting the requirements of generating the intelligence we need and ensuring the protection of U.S. citizens. Uh, sir, would you mind repeating the second portion? I, I the, the, the second portion was that the Privacy and Civil Liberties Oversight Board recommended ending bulk metadata collection altogether. And I was asking if you agree with that recommendation. And no, sir, I would not. I believe we can still do this in a way that ensures the protection of our citizens while also providing us insights that generate value. But, but you believe that the information should not be held by the U.S. government, is that correct? I, I support the President's decision to shift that from the National Security Agency. And, and if, if confirmed, uh, what would be a timetable for implementing that reform? To be honest, sir, I don't know. I'm just not smart enough yet about the particulars. It'll be driven by the solution that we come up with. That dialogue is ongoing right now. I haven't been a part of that as a nominee. Well, will you commit, if confirmed, to working with members of this committee to implement it expeditiously? Oh, yes, sir. I want to ask more generally. The, the Fourth Amendment protects the privacy of law-abiding Americans. What is your view of the appropriate limitations on the ability of the government to search through phone or email communications of law-abiding citizens not accused or under suspicion of any wrongdoing? I believe such searches should not be done without a corresponding legal framework for their execution. And does that framework, in your judgment, require individualized suspicion? I, I think it varies by the, the specifics of the threat that we're talking about, um, which is one reason why the metadata approach, I think, was taken to try to address that, to deal with no content, no names, no geographic location, to try to strike that balance, if you will. Would you agree that for the government to intercept content from telephones or emails requires under the Fourth Amendment individualized suspicion and some form of judicial oversight? I don't know that I would make a blanket statement again, sir. I apologize. I am not a lawyer, so now you're asking me about the specifics of the law, and that's just not an, an area of my expertise. Well, I, I would ask after this hearing if, if you would, would follow up and, and, and answer that question in writing, and then you can certainly consult with counsel. Yes, but, but the relevance of the Fourth Amendment in terms of how you would implement the policies at the NSA, I think, is, is, is a question of, of great interest to a great many citizens. And the government collecting metadata or even more so the content of communications between law-abiding citizens is an issue that, that the Constitution, I believe, speaks very directly to. And, and so I would appreciate your, your uh, expanded answer in writing after this hearing. Sure. I'd like to shift to the other side, uh, to the concern that I have that we are devoting far too many resources looking at law-abiding citizens and far too few resources looking at bad guys. And, and with regard, for example, to the Boston bombing, uh, the Tsarnaev brothers, we had been notified by Russia uh, that in their judgment they were having communications and may be radical Islamic terrorists. And the elder Tsarnaev brother posted and advertised his desire for jihad 
on YouTube, not exactly a secure hidden communication, but publicly for the world to see. Uh, and yet, even though we knew this individual or had reason to know this individual was a radical Islamic terrorist, and even though he was publicly proclaiming his desire for jihad, we failed to prevent that tragic bombing in Boston. Uh, and I'd like to ask you, why do you think that was and what can we do to correct it so we don't fail to prevent the next Boston bombing? Um, the reality is, sir, I, I don't know the specifics of the Boston bombing. It's not an element of my current duties and it's not something I have expressed direct knowledge of. And I think to comment knowingly, I would need that kind of knowledge. Well, a, a second example uh, deals with Major Nadal Hassan and, and the Fort Hood murders. And in that instance, Hassan had, had traded some 18 emails with radical Islamic cleric Anwar al-Awlaki, a known terrorist leader who was a spiritual advisor of the 9-11 bombers. So this is not some extraneous person. This is someone known to be a serious threat to this country and a major in the military is communicating repeatedly by email with him. And despite all of our surveillance capabilities, we failed to prevent that horrific terrorist attack at Fort Hood that claimed the lives of 14 innocents. In your judgment, why was that? What could we have done better to prevent that? Um, to be honest, I, I won't answer that question to Senator Graham. Um, well, let me suggest more broadly on, on both of these that it would be a far better allocation of resources in the NSA and in our efforts to prevent terrorism generally if much more resources were directed to targeting those who we have reason to know are dangerous. We have reason to know are or may be radical Islamic terrorists. And if less resources were devoted and less energy was devoted to broader interception and surveillance of the law-abiding citizenry, it, it, it has struck me for some time that the priorities have been backwards. and. We ought to be targeting the bad guys and protecting innocents from terrorist attacks and at the same time respecting the constitutional rights of every American. Thank you, Admiral. Thank you, General. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Wheel of Freedom. My name is Phil Marie. And tonight, uh, Wally is on special assignment, so uh, he will not be here. But we do have a calling guest at 7.15, uh, Karen Stewart, ex-NSA. She'll be calling in, I don't know, seven, seven minutes or something like that. But is that Karen on there? Yeah, she was on one, but she got disconnected. Okay. All right. Well, I, uh, just another minute. Uh, so anyways, Karen Stewart, ex-NSA, and uh, she was on with us several times. She hasn't been on for a while. And last week, well, before we start, before we bring Karen in, uh, last week, as you guys saw, I was um, attacked more so than I've ever been on uh, live TV, and it was very difficult, but uh, I was talking about GE and uh, some other subjects. I believe I showed the uh, video about the, I believe it came from the NSA with all the names revealed and that was from uh, Infowars and uh, Drudge Report and I paid a dear price for showing that but uh, Trump's name was on it. Michael Savage is on it. I would assume Probably my name's on it, so uh, I do want to take a look at that eventually. Uh, but anyway, so I got a little upset. I didn't even watch the show. Sometimes I'll, I'll, uh, you know, rewatch them. But uh, I've been hit a lot Saturday, Sunday, today, and uh, and that makes me want to just take the show and put it up on YouTube. I don't even care. I don't care how mad I get. I don't care how much I tore ass about Mandel, NBC, or anything. It doesn't matter. But uh, I can tell you one thing that, for instance, Reg, camera three. 
Right here, you're looking at my tweets. I lost my cool. Sorry about the picture again, but I have to remind these uh, jerks. I almost said the wrong word. I'm trying to do paperwork for my government-sponsored injuries. Stop zapping me. All right? And then the second tweet, when I'm, when I'm praying for POTUS, Donald Trump, I get electronically zapped by government antichrist. And then the last tweet on the bottom, give it a rest. The government chokehold and 24-7, 365 government bully has to stop. The government bullying has to stop. And uh, thanks, Reg. But this is bizarre. No, honestly, this is bizarre. I mean, I have better things to talk about than to say every time I pick up I get a stack of mail from the hospital, from the uh, state, whatever I'm trying to get, whatever help I can get. A stack of mail, a lot of things to fill out. And what's going on? Constant zapping where I can't even finish reading a paragraph. Then I got to go to Twitter and they've succeeded in stealing almost three days of my life by not letting me get into any paperwork by doing it. Anyway, so I had to get that off my chest and... Uh, and then I have a couple uh, of tweets here, which, which is important before I bring Karen on in about one more minute. But right here, Reg, camera three. All right, here, here's the first tweet. First Amendment, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, right? So I tweet, I have constitutional rights, First Amendment, to pray and read my Bible without being government harassed. That's the First Amendment. What's this? Third Amendment? What's that all about? No soldier shall in time of peace be quartered in any house without the consent of the owner, nor in time of war, but in a manner to be prescribed by law. Maybe it is prescribed by law, but my answer was, I have a Third Amendment right to keep military satellite intelligence out of my house. And you notice I send it to Rand Paul also, and this one I sent to the Army and Navy. I don't really care what they think. It's the Fourth Amendment. How about the Fourth Amendment? Everyone knows that. The right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, hospital papers, and efforts against... Uh, Un unreasonable uh, searches and seizures shall not be violated and so forth, blah, 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 on. I just want to hurry up and get to Karen, but I wrote, I have a Fourth Amendment right to keep government thugs from monitoring my hospital papers, which is bizarre. And then the Eighth Amendment. What's the Eighth Amendment all about? Cruel and unusual punishments inflicted. I have an Eighth Amendment right say no cruel and unusual punishment inflicted by government thugs. I also send that to Ram Paul, Ted Cruz, they're constitutionalists. So that's it. Thanks, Reg. Let's bring on Karen Stewart. Uh, hello, Karen. Are you there? Yes, I am. Hello, Phil. Hi, Karen. I, uh, I'm assuming that you heard the last five minutes or so, correct? Yes, and I wanted to tell you I am so very sorry that uh, for the injury that puts you in the hospital especially. I mean, this is not the only thing that's gone on with these idiots torturing you for nothing, but I wanted to tell you how very sorry I was that you received such a horrible injury, and I have been praying for you to have a complete and full recovery. Karen, I appreciate it. Thank that. you, Karen. And uh, I know there's, you know, I, I pray a lot. I pray for a lot of people. Uh, and I know there's a lot of people praying for me. And uh, this, this attack, I, I'll take a polygraph. I, I, I say it every time. I'll take a polygraph test if the FBI wants to do it live here, as long as I can ask them a few questions and they take the test. That's all. Um, um, everything I've ever said here about my situation, God is my witness, is the truth that I know. The truth that I know and what happened. And, uh, but this is alarming, Karen. That, that hit was so hard, it jolted me. It went from my feet right up to my body, out to my skull, twice. Zzz, 
and I jumped up which I was sleeping on the couch. It doesn't matter if I'm sleeping on the bed or a couch. I was, happened to be on the couch at that time. 2 a.m., February 20th, 2 a.m., which was the beginning of what? President's Day. So nonetheless, three days later, I end up with a ruptured uh, colon, and everyone knows the story uh, as far as with that. So, Karen, I am so glad to have you on, on with us. Uh, with all this stuff going on, especially in the deep state, all this stuff, there's so much horrible stuff going on. But before we get in deep with the deep state, why don't you just real quick, Karen, for the, some of the new viewers who may not have seen you before, heard you, whatever, can you just give a quick rundown how many years at the NSA, what, what led to what, and uh, just as brief as you can. Okay, I'll try to summarize. I am what I call an accidental whistleblower because all I did was I went to the Inspector General at NSA and I said, hey, can you investigate why a promotion board member is telling me that my uh, series, six-month series of intelligence reports uh, supporting Operation Iraqi Freedom in 2003 were credited to, an, to a woman who never worked on the project at all and she was given my double promotion because of the outstanding work that the promotion board thought that the six months uh, effort produced. And like I said, it, it was credited with saving over 2,000 lives. So all I did was ask the inspector general to do his job. And apparently that inspector general, George Ellard, had decided and that was uh, 2006 that I went to him, he had decided that uh, whistleblowers were to be destroyed at all costs, which is totally against federal law, especially the No Fear Act, which each and every agency is supposed to teach yearly to say that there's no problem going to the inspector general or the equal employment opportunity people and filing a complaint. You have a right to do so. But on the surface, it looks like you have a right to do so, but they use that as a way to decide who to get rid of. And so um, under George Ellard, he instructed NSA security basically to railroad me out of NSA at the 28-year point of my career for merely exercising my right to report wrongdoing. So that's a pretty quick synopsis. That, that, Karen, that's as good as it gets right there. And uh, so, so all this... The, all that led to the typical targeted scenario of, the, what, tens of thousands, if not hundreds of thousands of people going through this crap, of, of being stalked, harassed, uh, uh, you name it, right? 24-7 surveillance, harassed, and then, which is very unusual, that you got put into this electronic uh, 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 tax against your body, which is pretty interesting that they would have the nerve to do this to a uh, individual that, that that was in the NSA for 28 years. I mean, how much bolder can they get, Karen? Well, yeah, I uh, I just am astonished, and I think every so often I say, so this is what happens when you devote your life to protecting your country, you get a death sentence. And, and it obviously almost was a death penalty for me. And uh, yeah. I, I'm, I'm on high alert. That's all I can say. I am on the most highest alert. I don't ever trust this government or GE at all. And my concern is that they're going to do it again, and they can do it again. And they just shocked me in the uh, right thumb, like, yeah, we're going to do it again. They can do it again. I'll take my bugged truck, and I will hand deliver it to the front door of NBC if they want. They bugged my truck. They can receive my truck. If they've got a, you know, if, hey, Karen, Karen, if someone's hurting you, do you have a right to fight back? Uh, see, that's the, that's the problem. We are under assault. We are being killed. But the law says we have no right to defend ourselves. Well, we do. And unfortunately, it's going to take some kind of horrific episode that puts one of us on trial to prove it. And we would, as a group, much rather 
the government and law enforcement did their job. I, we don't want to take things into our own hands. We want the protection from the law and from the government that we are entitled to as American citizens. Now, Karen, the, the, obviously we know there's a, there's a problem with this in that uh, a lot of people are aware of this technology. I've done pretty good with a, 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 um, educating Connecticut anyways and, and whoever else up on, you know, on the Internet, but... A lot of people don't even want to know. I mean, I, I, I've heard this before on, on local media and everything where this subject actually comes up and people don't want to know. It's too scary and too creepy. Yeah. They, they just don't want to know and they fear that it could happen to them. So therefore, no one's going to help us because they're afraid of it happening to them. But why can't yeah. we get the people that are doing this in, in somehow, which I'm still hoping WikiLeaks, that's the other 99% they're holding on to. I'm hoping somewhere in that mix that this electronic torture or however you want to label it is exposed. It, it, it's actually electronic warfare in this stealth weapons, whether it's electromagnetic, yeah. pulse weapons, however you want to label it, lasers, it's all stealth weapons. So... Right, right. And they've been working on this type of weaponry for 60 years. 60. And they basically, in the last, I don't know, 10, 15, maybe 20 years, have uh, been able to take these devices and make them into mobile form so that you can put them not only on or in a Jeep or a, or a car, but you can actually put them in backpacks or even just large bags or purses. And if you aim them towards someone, apparently they have some kind of protective backing for the person using it, and then all they have to do is aim it at you in church, which I've had that done to me, or at a restaurant, or uh, sitting on a park bench. So these things can be mobile, and their uh, protocol is basically target somebody they want assassinated, and whistleblowers are high on that list, and patriots, uh, and then they pay these slime bags, uh, who have no talent, and I call them useless eaters. I'm sorry, but that's a horrific term. But I think we finally have found out who the, who the useless eaters in society are, and those would be the people who are being hired to assassinate us in a stealth fashion because they're cowards. No. Anyway, these people will follow you and hit you, hoping to hit you so much of 24-7 that they poison the cells in your body with electricity, they poison them to the point that you die, just like you would have poisoned somebody with more and more and more arsenic. So that anybody around you who actually is hit by these waves, unless they're hit 24-7 like you, they take in minimal damage because, they ha because they're not in it 24-7. Uh, like I said, if you take a little tiny bit of arsenic, you won't die from it. But if you take a whole lot, let's say that tiny bit over a year's time, you're dead. But if you have somebody who takes one little tiny bit uh, one day, it's not going to do anything to them. But so that what they're doing is poisoning us daily, 24-7, until something inside goes wrong, whether we have a heart attack or some kind of catastrophic uh, cellular collapse that maybe destroys a kidney or gives you a stroke or something like that. This type of thing is just meant to... Uh, bring anything that's a weakness to the forefront and have you die from it, like an aneurysm or, or something like that. It's basically electronic poisoning. Sure. Now, now Karen, I, which the viewers, a lot of them know, but uh, for the ones that don't, but there's, there's many different angles, many different, there, there's satellites, there's handheld weapons. Yeah. There, there's no way of proving this because it's all frequency or laser, whatever, and uh, it's... <laughs> it's monumentally at, difficult. It's not impossible. It's monumentally difficult. Well, th th that's true. Now, now, I learned early on in New Hampshire, I, I, I was lucky enough to be up near the National Forest, and I used to go 11 miles. I knew uh, all the secret places, 11 miles into the National Forest, where I knew for sure... Nobody, even no cell phone reception, nothing. I was by myself 
And uh, early, early on, and they uh, were, were hit me, and that's obviously when I knew this was a, also a, a, a satellite-based uh, weapon, weaponry, which, which we've talked about, Karen, because this also, you, the, the military is big with this stuff, the Army, the Navy, the Air Force. And yeah. in, in the video I showed was Admiral Mike Rogers, the head of the NSA, who was obviously in charge of the Navy. So my question to you, Karen, are they merging technologies, the NSA and the Navy, with this guy in charge? Well, let me put it to you this way. I was forced out of NSA in 2010. And uh, I will say that NSA itself, its own security people, stalked and harassed me, just like the gang stalkers. So that proves to me the federal government is not only behind it, but they actually do it. So there's a concrete... Uh, there's concrete proof right there that the federal government is highly involved. Um, they stalked and harassed me from 2006 until 2009, um, trying to intimidate me to drop my inquiring about why my, um, my, why my uh, promotions were stolen. So that, of course, like I said, is solid proof. And uh, in 2010, um, they did fire me, and they stopped stalking and harassing me. So in 2015, I had already filed a lawsuit against them with the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission that was accepted and was sitting there waiting for adjudication. When we found new evidence against NSA, and my lawyer subpoenaed that evidence in early 2015. Well, by that time, I had moved down to Florida. And uh, NSA, I was told by the Sheriff's Department that NSA had come to town for a secret exercise. And I think they didn't understand that they, that they were spilling the beans. So after I was told this um, is when, well, actually, uh, they told me after that I figured out I was being stalked and harassed yet again. And it appeared to be, first of all, that Navy personnel had come to Tallahassee from uh, Pensacola and were taking photographs of me. And why do I say that? Because there are two different teams of uh, photo stalkers, is what I call them. And their license plate and um, logo on their car showed that they were from the Navy base. And one of them had a tattoo he was trying to cover up that was a Navy tattoo. So, you know, one plus one equals two. So I, then I investigated, and the people in uh, Pensacola, the Naval Security Group there, are called Silent Warriors. Well, why are they called Silent Warriors? Because they handle directed energy weapons. Okay? And the headquarters of this naval security group moved to Fort Meade, Maryland between when I was fired and when I was being stalked yet again. So the people who run the directed energy weapons for the entire Navy now are co-located at Fort Meade, Maryland with NSA and an admiral at the head of NSA. So you cannot tell me they are not borrowing directed energy weapons from the Navy. I, Karen, you couldn't have said that any better. I, but my assumption is obviously that the emergent technology and uh, and I, 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 you don't need to make any opinion on this, but <clears throat> when I watched last week, Trey Gowdy, I believe it was, questioned Mike Rogers I actually started getting zapped, and I, I got zapped so hard that I had to go to Twitter, and I tweeted about it, how I'm watching uh, uh, Admiral Rogers not answer the questions. They were attacking me. But what, what started it, Karen, I felt like I was in this weird dr dream or something. The guy's eyes looked all dark and shadows, and it, it actually was creeping me out looking at him. He, he reminded me <laughs> of that crazy zombie we bring in here to the set at times. It looked just like that. And uh, so anyways, that's my own opinion. I can say what I want and think what I want, but that uh, the guy was creeping me out just, just looking at him. He, he just didn't look like a like a loving guy, that's all. <laughs> well, you know, uh, the NSA Inspector General, George Ellard, and I'm saying his name because he's been in the news, he um, basically spent the last decade or so uh, persecuting whistleblowers and destroying them. 
uh, in totally opposed to the law. So finally, something caught up with him where uh, enough of his misdeeds uh, were brought to Admiral Rogers such that Rogers was kind of forced to fire him. So I thought when that happened, hey, maybe I have a chance with this guy, maybe this director of NSA is not a criminal like Keith Alexander and uh, Michael Hayden were before him. So I wrote him a letter in December uh, 2016, told him about my plight, and uh, I said, you know, basically this needs to be resolved. These people who fabricated and lied about me and pushed me out with no uh, real cause they need to be dealt with, and I need um, basically my uh, the money that I lost restored and my reputation restored. So I wrote to him and sent it in December, and I even had a couple of friends on the inside of NSA hand deliver the letter to his staff. Okay. No. So the man has this letter. Now, Karen, if you want, did did you want to read any of the letter, or what do you where do you where do you want yeah, to go I, with this? Well, yeah, I can I can read this letter, and then I will tell you that in three months of him having this letter, I have heard nothing. Okay, well, listen, before you start, I'm going to ask Reg to go to camera three when you start reading this. I actually have the letter, compliments of you. Thank you, Karen. And uh, if the viewers want to kind of look at, at, at the letter as you're reading it, right? Is that okay with you, Karen? That's absolutely fine. Okay. All right, so anytime you want to start, I just read, if you can get me to camera three, that'd be, uh, here we go, it's up here, Karen. Okay, and I will say that some of the last names are crossed out just because you're not supposed to give last names, but there are a couple that are still in because those people have already been identified in the news. So that is the difference. Okay. Okay, uh, okay I'm going to begin. It says, uh, Dear Admiral Rogers, as a former NSA intelligence analyst, I highly commend you for the stance, for your stance in regard to IG George Ellert. He is beyond criminal and should go to prison in addition to being fired. Do not let political pressure sway you from taking out the garbage. I went through and am still going through a living hell years after I was fraudulently fired at the 28 year point in my career at NSA, essentially because of the best work of my career which cost me my job so that upper management in weapons and space, and I named Robert G. Drew M., could reward an incompetent woman named Margarita in my office for her prolific sexual favors to weapons and space upper management as witnessed to me by Cindy H. And by fraudulently crediting her, meaning Margarita, with my work, award-winning support of Operation Iraqi Freedom so that she could receive my double promotion. In short, to avoid a scandal, George Ellard, the IG, had the guilty people fabricate criminal accusations against me concerning a leak to the newspapers, which may or may not have even happened. In regard to a subject I had never, uh, let's see now, I never had training in, exposure to, or knew anyone with access to. Uh, he then had security pretend to think I was guilty of something to thwart my own IG complaint, which he refused to investigate, nor would he interview my witnesses. After the false accusation by Suzette, uh, security Joe so-and-so Jr. gave me a thoroughly abusive polygraph in that regard, making me flunk the first polygraph ever in my career. Then attempts were made to upset and intimidate me for consequent polygraphs to make me appear guilty of the impossible. When I tried to complain to his supervisor, meaning Joe, Renee H., she hung up on me, showing me that she knew he was instructed to skew the results by improper behavior. I even was called down to security psych services and told by Dina Wyshynski, Dr. Dina Wyshynski, who's been in the news before for being dishonest, that if I did not drop my IG investigation request, that she would review all my previous psychological tests and find a problem in order to have me lose my clearance and job. She even cattily remarked, 
what a shame it would be for me to lose out on my retirement so close to the end of my career. When I resisted the threat, knowing I had done nothing wrong and that I had legal right to pursue an IG complaint, security decided to falsify accusations against me with the FBI, first through Suzette, and I'll explain that Suzette and Rita were best friends, uh, and um, falsifying accusations with the FBI is a felony. Um, so I'll go back to the letter. It says, who, in who investigated and found no wrongdoing, meaning the FBI? When the FBI dropped the case, NSA security proceeded to massively slander me based on their own lies, which was corroborated by co-worker Gary W. Hey, Karen. Yes. It's optional, but we, we only got like 10 minutes left of the show, and I don't I, I, I don't want to miss out on the other stuff. And you got like a page and a half more. Uh, yeah. at, the, at the last page, you know, this is how my country repays me for my lifetime dedication to its service. There is other subjects I want to briefly touch on with you. Sure. So, uh, Reg, back to back to me, please. Thanks. So, Karen. Anyways, to the to the viewers, that's a that's a good idea of what this woman's been through, and there's you know another page and a half. So, I, I don't want to burn up the whole show on that, Karen. But two things that kept popping in the mind that I know the viewers guaranteed they picked up on was one, you mentioned sexual favors, and then another thing was a sex scandal, Karen. Tell the viewers what, what's up with this sex stuff, because this is, this is what's behind a lot of this stuff. A bunch of perverts and pedophiles have been saying it forever. Tell the viewers, Karen, what that's about. Well, it, it's very unfortunate. Um, once I got into NSA and had been there a while, it, very, it became very apparent that the management there was, uh, they were holding so tightly to promotions that they were putting out the message that if the women wanted promotions, they had to put out. So that, that was very discouraging. And I have read, since I left NSA, I have read that uh, the sexual predation at NSA has become so bad that managers are now, even male managers are going to young male uh, hirees who may or may not be homosexual and demanding sex. So things have gotten absolutely out of control at NSA. And these are the type of people who think they can do anything they want behind closed doors and that you can't report them because everything is secret. So uh, it's, it's out of control. It's absolutely out of control. I, I, there are people hired into high managerial positions who are absolutely, totally unfit to work there, much less hold managerial, managerial position, uh, positions. I, okay. That, huh. I believe that. I totally believe that, Karen. I think that goes on a lot more in this world with the old sexual favor type deal because even our good old Fox News was going through that with these people, these yeah. uh, women saying that the uh, Roger Ailes, whatever it is, uh, whatever, and, you know, it, it's, but you shouldn't, it, it, you shouldn't have to go through that at any job, anywhere, anywhere in this planet, you shouldn't have to go through that. And, uh, the, you know, that makes me think of the chart I saw like a, a week or two ago about all the uh, complaints of sexual harassment and rapes that totally double in the military in the last so many years, that that's a huge problem, too, where, where they're just having at, at will with these women. It's, it's horrible. Yeah, it Karen. is. And they, too, are resorting to the fight, false psychological attack. Oh, you just think this is happening to you. And where have we seen this? We saw this in the Soviet Union and communist China, where they basically take anybody who tries to tell the truth, call them crazy, and put them away. Well, when we've got our own military and our own government doing that to its own employees, we're in trouble. Now, Karen... We're uh, absolutely in trouble. I, it's, it, it's sick. It's sick. Uh, before I forget, I just want to show the viewers something real quick. Uh, Reg, camera three. The mad scientist at DARPA plan to crush Russia and China with swarm weapons, right? So this, this article anyways about DARPA, hold, hold on, Reg. But, so on, on some of these tweets, 
I got upset and I was sending it to the NSA, the CIA, DARPA, and GE. And I, and I reminded these people, your souls, may your souls rot in hell, that's all. Worship Satan all you want. He loves you in his fire. Now, on the, uh, on the bottom tweet here, I send out, don't worry about gnashing of your teeth in hell. It's only for eternity. Keep on torturing. I send it to DARPA, <laughs> all right, in these yep. pictures. So the viewers get to see it. Thanks, Reg. We only got five minutes left. But so I, I, I wrote a tweet, another tweet after to DARPA. <laughs> DARPA deleted their whole uh, Twitter account that I see. Karen, did you ever be able to find it? Uh, no, I, I haven't. Hey, I'm, I haven't. I'm telling you. And, and so Those my 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 message is, if you can't take the heat, get out of the kitchen. And apparently DARPA couldn't take the heat, so they got out of the no. kitchen. So, uh, Karen, we only no, got... They're not a benevolent group. They're not a benevolent group. They have insane ideology. It's... Hey, you all... Can't tell, you cannot tell Russia and China we're going to come destroy you. I mean, uh, President Putin of Russia has been on record begging the United States to stop its um, projects in directed energy weaponry because if we don't quit, Russia will be, will be forced to preempt us. Which is foolish. Now, uh, Reg, camera three again. Here's, here's another article. This is the Star Wars-like weapons from, this is the uh, Pakistan. This is uh, the Pakistani defense. And there's an article from, from New Delhi from, with, with India that they're moving into these stealth weapons, India and Pakistan. So you guys okay. can look it up. It's defense.pk, which is Pakistan, and Star Wars-like weapons. Uh, thanks, Reg. So, yeah, these, it's insane that we have these weapons. It is a wholly and totally past insane that other countries uh, try to get into this because, you know, the, the thing with stealth weapons is that you do not have that inhibition about using them that you do with nuclear weapons. If you use a nuclear weapon, everybody knows. Yeah. But if you use a stealth weapon, it's hard to prove. Well, it, it's, could you imagine if they had people that they wanted to get rid of, like high in the, in the nation, like a president, a Supreme Court justice, or something like that? Could you imagine if they could just zap and you cause know, a heart Scalia? attack? Yeah, like Justice Scalia, maybe? Yeah, yeah. So, anyways, Reg, camera three one more time. Three minutes left, Karen. What I'm showing the viewers here, I showed it not last week, but the week before, and that's, uh, th that show was actually up on YouTube, but nefariousjobsmain.com. Karen, I sent this to you. You saw it. I'm just reminding the viewers if they doubt any of this gang stalking and uh, uh, hire to destroy people, complete annihil total annihilation, $10,000 deposit, 500 a month, you can destroy anybody at any time, anywhere. Thanks, Reg. Yep. So, Karen, and, we... And uh, security, security role players is what they, they will use to advertise for thugs as well. So, Karen, we only got two minutes left, and something that's so dear to my heart, and the only thing I left New Hampshire with was my faith. I know you're very strong with your faith, and that's what attracted me to you big time. The first time we talked, I, I just felt the Holy Spirit. Karen, I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful that I got to meet you and we became good friends. Uh, unfortunately, I wish we didn't have to go through this, but in, we got like a minute left, Karen. One last word on about faith and what it, what it means to you. Uh, well, I would say that if you have if you have no faith in this type of situation, that you're behind, uh, you, you're basically going to have nothing to cling to, and faith is everything. And I do believe that God has just about had enough, and you're going to see some amazing things in the next few months. I really, really, truly believe it from the prophecies and pro from modern-day prophets and people like that and the feelings that I get when I pray that this is just about over, that God is going to move because this is beyond Nazi Germany and he's had enough. So I would tell people, read Psalm 91 and 94. Those are favorites of mine, 91 for protection, 
94, to remind yourselves that God is a God of vengeance. And even though he is a God of mercy, he runs out of mercy and he comes out swinging. Karen, we're starting to fade out. Thank you so much. We're going to have to have you come back again. That letter was fascinating. I know that people probably wanted to hear the end of it. But nonetheless, we only got a short one hour. That's it. So thank you, Karen. God bless all the viewers. God bless America. We'll see you guys next week. Good night. Thank you. Questions? I know. Well, either you know or you don't know. You cannot know what I know. That's all. <laughs>